SDPN and PWHPA presents Hockey Like you've never heard it before The Noxie and Cax Show With Liz Knox and Carol L. Emard <laughs> Let's get it. Go. Happy Tuesday, everyone, and welcome back to the Knox and Cack Show on SDPN. We are your hosts, Liz Knox and Carol Lamart of the PWHPA, and we have Winnie and Henry. And I had Rupert, but he just, he bailed. He bailed on me so fast. Um, and we are thrilled to have our next guest on the show, a uh, native of Keswick, Ontario, the Kesrock, as we call it locally, a Clarkson University alumni representing the PWHPA Montreal region and looking extra fresh in her new bling from the 2022 Beijing Olympics. It's Aaron Ambrose. Hello, everybody. And that's Yay. Henry's time to leave. <laughs> yeah, the dogs well, are gone now, although I'm sure they will be barking in the near future. <laughs> probably. Yep. I so will, uh, I'll put money on it. Actually, bet money. The first dog that gets um, actually one of our dogs, the first one that we all owe this person. Uh, coffee. Actually, yeah, I love need it to buy coffee for all of us. I'm into Do that. that. Okay. It's probably going to be me. Um, so first of all, back to back to Aaron, back to hockey. What is it like to be home? Talk about your last couple of weeks and maybe talk about uh, what you guys were up to last night. Um, well, I will. I will bring it out. There she is. Ooh. A beautiful friend. Ah, uh, only got a couple beautiful. days there. Yeah. Um, it has been a whirlwind, obviously, um, as you can tell by the voice. <laughs> I uh, made the trek to Montreal and we got honored last night at the Habs game and it was incredible. I've never heard an arena erupt like that when they said Marie Philippe Poulin's name and <laughs> it was incredible. Uh, just such a special moment. And I'm glad Cax got to be there to witness it. I, I was. Yeah. yeah. Cax <laughs> just, she just sneaks her way into these things. Eh? You know? I don't know. I, um, now we, uh, we were talking about it with the girls and everything. And then they're like, why don't you come? And uh, actually both uh, Sam Isbell and myself, joined the girls in the box. And I will say it was <clears throat> like the atmosphere and the fans there were absolutely fabulous. It was crazy when the girls got on the ice and how loud it get, it got. And I, right before they named Pooh, I was like, Sam, get ready for this one. Like, just like, it's probably going to get louder. And sure enough, <laughs> like the building just went off. Just erupted. Crazy. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then like goosebumps everywhere. We we're just like so pumped to be there. And Yeah. I think that's really cool because I was actually at a TFC game last night and we went to when uh, Team Canada women were playing Mexico at at BMO Field in Toronto. And there's something about soccer fans that they like are just soccer fans. Like, and I feel like we're starting to open this door in hockey where it's like they just appreciate like hockey talent you know the fans that are there like the true fans of hockey they're not here to like shit on women's hockey they're just like hey this is these are the best players in our country like and they erupt for it so i i love to hear that you guys were uh had a warm welcome in montreal and obviously a great hockey city and we're gonna we're gonna be there at the end of the season which is crazy and i'm excited for you guys had there Oh my God. And Aaron made a point just there to put the emphasis on Pooh, but I will say that she was the first one to step on the ice and the building was screaming <laughs> and people were pumped and everyone got that little round of applause. It was, it was sick too. So don't be so humble there. Well, I will, that. because I was like, I went, I was like, wow, Ambrose. I was like, I guess the last name, like usually it's Jersey numbers. Right. So I'm like, <laughs> right. I went first and then it was Stace and then Jill. And I was like, no, definitely not alphabetical. <laughs> and like, like, what are they doing? So they put the Frenchies in the back. So Anne, Renee, yeah. Mello, and Pooh. Uh, that makes were sense. We're the last three. But it was, sense, uh, Montreal. it was pretty awesome. They were playing Ottawa. And uh, I have a guy that I grew up with, Chris Tierney, plays for Ottawa. And I texted him before saying I was at the game, would be at the game. And he texted me, he goes, I didn't know you were getting honored. He goes, I never start, but it would have been really cool to be on the ice with you. <laughs> Aww, so that's that was, so cute. Yeah, him and Connor Brown, I played against him and just like, the two of them, like I got choked up when I looked back and I saw Chris, cause it was just like, he's living his dream. I'm getting honored for accomplishing my, my dream. And it was pretty cool. Oh, I like it's a this. very, very humbling moment. So let's go back to when you played boys hockey uh, for the York Simcoe express. Talk about what it was like growing up with the boys. Um, because we kind of talked about this before the show, you know, there is, 
there are horror stories. Of course, there are, you know, bad experiences that that young girls have, but they're also great stories. So why don't you tell us about your experience? Yeah, I was very fortunate. I played four years for the Georgina Blaze. Um, so that was double A in Georgina, which is my hometown, and then moved up to AAA in York Simple Express. And as I alluded to earlier, like Chris and I played together for every year, like every team, every summer team, everything, Chris, myself, and Sean Walker, who plays for LA, the three of us played together. I didn't play a single game without them. And uh, I was just fortunate. The group with the York Simple Express, all the guys were fantastic. Um, I still stay in touch with quite a few of them. So I actually, on Saturday coming up, um, York Simcoe is doing a, a day for me too. So I'm just excited to kind of, um, I don't know, go back to those years in a sense. And um, it's pretty special being from a smaller town, being able to get recognized and um, Keswick's not known for a lot of things. So um, <laughs> it's, this, this is high up there right now. <laughs> I and love it, that. <laughs> does it like, does it help? I mean, obviously like your emotions and your relationship with these guys is like, this runs, you know, way, way back. Does it help put into perspective though, kind of what the PWHPA is doing when you look across the ice and you see these guys that for, you know, more or less have had the same, you know, hockey experiences as as you until a certain age. And then it just kind of parts. Yeah. I think that that's obviously the biggest reason for us, to do what we're doing with the PWHBA and push for more is we know that maybe it's not going to happen right now for us, but I want the little girl who's playing for the York Simcoe Express now to be able to have a different path than I did. And when she gets to that fork in the road, that the fork's just going to keep carrying on that she doesn't have to just lean back on college and call it a career kind of thing. And um, I've talked about it with my family tons that like Chris and I have had a very, very similar path. Um, and he's going on and he's going into contract year this summer. And it's like, I know my buddy's going to be signing a really big ticket again. And I'm so proud of him for that, but it's just like, you son of a gun. Like <laughs> it's, <laughs> a, it's the difference into like the whole opportunities level, right? Like he's yeah. getting to do that. And we, back in the day, we're getting to sign a $2,000 potential contract with the seat up, right? Like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's a, the opportunities are just so unequal and, and you're right. Like that's why we're doing it. And we might not sign those big contracts basically, but they will down the road. And, and we're all aware of that too, right? Like we understand yeah. that we know that, and yeah. uh, we know that it's just going to be a matter of time that it, it's not for us. Mm-hmm. As much as we are doing this right now, it, it's not for us. It's for those <laughs> knocking the mirror down. <laughs> Henry, no. <laughs> it's for the next generation. And we yes, love it. That's what I'm alluding <laughs> is, is that to. worth a coffee? Like, uh, it's, I mean, he didn't no, bark, he but... anything yet. Okay, yeah, okay fair enough. Yet. Okay, yeah. that was almost We're a tight game here. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like and it. Speaking, of, speaking of, you know, the players that you played with, um, when you did make the transition over to play girls hockey, uh, you became a Toronto Arrow. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those, those of us in women, like in, in Ontario, like the Arrows are always like kind of the... They're jacked. Just They're so good. Stacked. They're stacked. Just stacked. Up. Like the, you guys had all the studs and you played with Solnier, uh, Laura Stacy, and Ailish Forfar, who we've had on the show. So talk us through a little bit like your guys' friendship, how it has grown and changed and evolved from, you know, being 16 yeah. to now <laughs> you guys are in Montreal together. Yeah. Like I'm at Jill's apartment right now. It's a beautiful apartment, by the way. I know that. <laughs> but like for Jill and I, um, Jill came in, she's two years older, but her high school things kind of got messed up. And her first year on the team, our team was unbelievable. We went down, we played Harvard, Cornell and Brown didn't lose a game. Wow. Our junior team. And it's like, and Harvard, I think uh, Christina Kessler was a goalie too on Harvard. And we, oh, yeah. We, yeah, we tied them. So it was <laughs> she was, like, of course, an arrow also. Exactly. A stud. A like no, one of the best goalies of our yeah. age, uh, the best goalie of my the age best. group for yeah. sure. Yeah. So it was just like that group. And then um, with Ailish, I had grown up with Ailish, played with her and Georgina for a little bit. Um, like she's from again, Keswick, just making big, <laughs> big changes in the world, but like getting to play with her in junior was pretty special. And then Laura, I mean, Laura has been my best friend for over 10 years and 
Um, I lived with her in high school for a little bit. Um, Pooh sent me a picture yesterday of us with Santa Claus. And I'm just happy that we grew up. I think we should try to get this picture. Oh, yeah, let's, text probably, let's, get this picture. let's get it's her. Bad. It is very bad. We're just, wearing, just a little bit of an awkward, awkward face for you guys or what? We're wearing beige khakis. First okay. of all. That's a good start. That's a good start. Second of all, clearly I was trying to hide my sexuality. <laughs> I've what do got you this mean, yellow Aaron? scarf on and it's like choking me. But the yellow matches this yellow sweater vest that no. I'm wearing. This Come on. cross. Was it Argyle? Oh, An Argyle yeah. sweater vest? Oh, yeah. I remember that phase. <laughs> oh, yeah. You rocked that in your Laurier days. With of your color course pop, I probably. did. Double color pop, actually. Uh, I was going to say there's no way there's just one. Day. It was the double polo, the polos or whatever. Oh, God, that was really a choice back in the day. I'm crying just thinking about because I was a, a terribly awkward teenager and like early in into college. And then I kind of just figured out, <laughs> just figured there. out how to look less like a 12 year old boy, but yes. not really. I just moved up to like 14. So exactly. Just grow up, <laughs> come up a little size, a couple more sizes too. And exactly. Go. Exactly. Oh <laughs> I love that. So you guys go way back and then they're, they're all still in your life and present as far Very as much. It, so yeah, like I connect with Ailish whenever I can. I think what Ailish is doing in the media world is mm-hmm. just getting started. I think yeah. she's going to have a lifelong career. And uh, I know I've talked to it, uh, Jeff Merrick quite a bit about Ailish and how much promise and just how bright her future is. And I'm mm-hmm. so excited for her with that. And then Laura and Jill, like you can't say enough about them. Jill will probably stumble in here at some point and make a ruckus, but like, yeah, Jill I told her changed. to do it. I told Honestly, her not to worry and come back with a coffee. So. Exactly. Like nothing has changed with her. And then Laura, I had said to Laura, I guess it would have been that final game. I turned her on the blue line and I said, like, I promised you one day we would do this together. It took me a little bit longer, uh-huh. but like for us to do that together meant uh, more to me than a lot, a lot of people know. That's oh. so cute. I just, I, I just got the same and like teary eye a little bit here. <laughs> we need to get Laura on the show now. We have a, uh, yeah, we, we yeah. Got the, you got well, some if she ever texts us back, like yeah. I saw her yesterday and I the mentioned common thread it, so. here. <laughs> I have oh, a yeah. message with you guys. Yeah, that's true. No, that's I true. I slid into Cax's DMs to try to get like, ooh. She did. I was don't like, you guys live like a couple blocks from each other? <laughs> I don't actually live here. I'm in town no, for the weekend. She moved. Like, oh, she's okay. no longer here. So we, we, you know, it would have been easy I'm if she was here. Toronto. Oh, I'm My ready. Toronto. Let's do it. I'm here for it. Okay. Um, actually, I was hanging out with some of your friends last night who uh, you guys had like a little St. Patty's Day celebration together on Thursday. It sounded like it was a good time. We did have a good time. Uh, we yeah. had a lot of fun, actually. That was kind of my first time hosting when I had a couch because I didn't have a couch the last time they were there. But <laughs> we, uh, I love that, we, though. Just come sit on the floor. It's fine. Yeah. Well, right now, my uh, my ND mattress box is my coffee table. So we're still getting there. Um, <laughs> but it just was it was so nice to be able to be just reconnected with the Toronto group. I think like, obviously I'd been in Montreal for quite a few years, but whenever I'm in Toronto, I feel like I'm trying to see people whenever I can. So to finally just be able to be like, Hey, come over to my place. It's like, it's really exciting. So Oxy, come over to my place, please. You heard it here. That's my invite. I'm coming over right now. <laughs> Meet you well, there. Not, Cause you're not there. Yeah. Um, okay. Let's, let's switch gears a little bit. Let's talk uh, quickly about your time at Clark. So we've had a few Clarkson grads on this show now. Yeah, so many, we're starting actually. to, yeah, way too many. <laughs> like, I feel like we should be getting, uh, I don't know, some Clarkson swag or sponsorship or something. Like we shout them out even know every other I episode. Any. I will not wear it. But, um, <laughs> Loser. I'm going to be honest with you. I'll not wear it. Um, no, I think we need to like uh, maybe invite some people from other, uh, yeah, other, other, other leagues. Now we need to uh, branch out. We love our Clarkson, our Clarkson people. Don't worry, we do. nothing people. against you. We're yes. good people. We do yes, love our Clarkson great. friends. Clarkson so, is great. Yeah, and and you battled quite a number of injuries. Seriously. I was learning almost uh, every yeah. year. Right? Uh, yeah, I seem to break my fingers quite frequently. Um, <laughs> that's literally what it's just always what happened. I would go yeah. to some sort of hockey Canada event and come back and I'd have a broken finger. It happened, I think two or three in a row and obviously really frustrating. Um, and for me, my freshman, sophomore year, 
athletes. They were great. Like had a lot of su- success personally. And then after a national championship, I got injured that year and unfortunately couldn't play um, in the finals. But coming back, I think I didn't fully recover from that injury. Um, it was a high ankle sprain and that just stuck with me for a very, very long time. Um, and junior, senior years were tough. Um, I think I had a hard time kind of finding my place. Um, I appreciate everything that Matt, Britt and Meg did for me. Um, in the moment, I was not happy about a lot of things, <laughs> but I think that it was a lot of a wake up call for me and something that I did need. Um, even though I might not have realized it at the moment. It's always like that, right? You don't necessarily, you look back at it or even your coach almost like they tell you stories when you go back and they're like, yeah, like while you were going through it, obviously you could see it, but then you're taking a look at it and looking back on your time and you're realizing like, man, they, they were right. And it's so, it's so hard to like, not hard to admit it, but it's almost like, I wish I would have known what I know now. Cause then you can kind of like get over those phases, maybe a bit faster or receive the help that they're trying to, to provide at times too. Right. Cause they see a lot of players like that go through the same things over and over. Um, and yeah, I've, I've been a coach, so I know a little bit on yeah. that side of things but on the co- at the college level and you're just trying to be there, but sometimes it's a, it's the people need to be ready to receive as well too. And yeah. you're right. Like maybe it was just a little bit of a growing up part and then you got well, out. It's, it's hard too, right? Like this is the first time for a lot of these young athletes that they yeah. are away from home. Like you don't have your regular support system where, you know, you get in the car and you talk about your game or yeah. whatever it may be. Yeah. And so you're, you feel like you're on an Island trying to deal with these things. And as much as we love our teammates in college, like they're also like our competition. So it's like, yeah, you know, can you go back to your dorm and, and vent to your team about whatever it may be ice yeah. time or whatever, like you don't want to be toxic to the culture mm-hmm. of your team either. So then you just kind of sit there and like dwell in it. And it, it can be, it can be a very slippery slope. Oh, absolutely. And I think one of the biggest things for me was my freshman year. It's not like it's not out there. I was put on academic probation um, (laughs) after first semester. So I think when I overcame that and my turnaround from my first semester to second semester was fantastic. I, I think I felt like I had my feet under me. Mm -hmm, Um, And then sophomore season was one of the greatest seasons of my life personally, and obviously for us as a team as well with our success of the national championship. And I think everybody had to readjust. We got new coaches. Like there were so many different things that were changing. Um, and I, I don't want to say that all of the things that I did were wrong. Cause I think that I, like, I will still like stand up for myself in some parts, but I also think that, yeah, I needed to have that, that wake up and some different, and I, I was at a tough point with the national program. Like mm-hmm. I, cracked the team in 2014, my first four nations, and I wasn't cracking any more rosters. Um, and with what I had gone through kind of my younger years with the U18s and the development group, like I felt like I was on a great trajectory. And I think that was the first bit of rockiness that I hit and I didn't get through it in the right way. I didn't go about it and try to get through it in the right way. So definitely a lot of lessons learned. Um, and I do think that those were some tough conversations that I had to have with both my coaches at Clarkson as well as hockey Canada to kind of figure some things out eventually. And, and, you know, despite all that, and I'm going to take the last little point here, Liz, but uh, despite all the injuries and everything, everyone listening here, you were still a Patty Cas nominee and did everything and really, really helped actually to go the Knights to be successful. So like, I through it all, I just feel like you were still that hockey player that had an impact for your team. So it's a good, it's a, I want to end it on a, on a good note <laughs> on, on that part. But I just, I just think that you need to know that you had a really good and positive impact on, on your teammates probably and everything and everyone that came after you at, at, at Clarkson too. So, you. you know, our class was pretty special. I mean, looking at it now, like myself, Renata Fast, um, Shannon McCauley, who, did a lot of great things obviously with her hockey career and now is continuing to push in. Um, she's with hockey Canada as, as one of their uh, strength and conditioning coaches, like, and then Olivia Howe who's w- working with Moose Jaw warriors, like us four, like we ratty and Howie probably say that they changed the culture of Clarkson. <laughs> We're going to say that we changed the, Clarkson, the culture of Clarkson. So get Renata on and she's going to fight for the 94 class again. <laughs> 
<laughs> there it's you go. True. Ratty did say. Yeah. Ratty did <laughs> say it. But you know what? It it does. It, you know, it trickles down. It, it, there's a trickle down effect, and uh, it starts. You know, can start with as little as one player or as one group, and then uh, you know, it's it's good to see a program turn around the way that it did in your, in your guys' years. So um, that's a proud proud you know culture to be a part of. And then after university, um, you were drafted to the Toronto Furies in the sixteen seventeen season, Ooh. where you played. And tell us about kind of your first intro into the city of HL and what, what those years were like. Cause this, <laughs> this clump of like four years here, three, four years is a little bit of a gong show, but let's start with, let's start with the Furies. <laughs> so the Furies, um, it was actually a lot of fun. So Renata and I both got drafted to Clarkson or to from Clarkson to Toronto. Um, and it was awesome. Like I loved our group. Um, I will say that, I hadn't quite understood. Everybody's like, Furies have more fun. But I was like, I think the Thunder have more fun. Like, I'm just going to throw that out there. But it was great. Like, I had a great group of people around. Playing with Spooner was awesome. Um, it was a weird year, for sure. I think um, whenever you come out of college and you went into the CW, I think we can all agree it was a little bit of a slap in the face, just wake up call. Yeah. Um, so a lot of things to get adjusted to. And your first year out of college is for anybody let alone somebody who's trying to perform at a high level and has aspirations of making the national team. So I think it was a great year. I think Renata and I really grew a lot together. Um, and that showed in us um, both making that um, world championship team after our first year in the CW. So I was really fortunate to be with her um, day in and day out. And um, actually our whole Toronto group, our training group. So it, uh, it was a different year to say the least, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. That's great. Sorry. Go ahead, Gax. I can see it. I can see no, it. I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I kept trying to go in, but I, I feel like we can get to it. Obviously I've known you well more so when you were on the Montreal side, we played against each other and Toronto was always like a, um, a little bit of a rivalry with Montreal, but I'm like, how, how, how was it from your side? Like I, I heard it from Noxie's side. Um, how was it from your side to playing with Toronto that you, I think Spooner was there Prevo, like yeah. you still had, like, there's a good team going on. Yeah. A lot of retired or left a little bit. Um, when you came in, I think, yeah. um, I like, how was that? I just want to touch on that before we get to you here in Montreal. Oh, it was awesome. Like I talked about Christina Kessler already. Like she was our goalie there, yeah. which was so much fun. Um, our decor was a little, uh, thin, I will say, um, <laughs> We had Renata and I came in and then Carly Campbell came out of retirement. So yeah. when Carl came in, like that was a lot of fun. And I think I learned so much, obviously an alumni from Clarkson. Yay. But I learned so much from her just about being a better human being. I think there's uh, not too many people in the world like, like her and to have her around all the time and just put things into perspective when she goes to work all the time. And I go to train in the gym. Like it's, it's something that, you don't really, I think you take advantage of as a national team athlete, I'll definitely mm -hmm. say. Um, but I also think that it was something that we needed to have our eyes open to. Um, yeah. And then just being with Toronto, you were right. We had a rivalry cax and I absolutely <laughs> hated you on the ice. I hated you in practices when we practiced See, that's together. that's not my I point. Hated... Every, time, <laughs> every time I ask this, I should know, but it's yeah, not you're my point. You're setting know. yourself up. That's, that's not what I'm looking for to get out of these questions. Gosh, but uh, thank you. Okay. you asked. I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> it is a compliment. I hate when people get offended when it's like, <laughs> like it's I'm such not. a compliment to be a pain to play against. Like it's such a compliment. And I think that that year it's weird to think back. Like that's like a long time ago. And yeah, actually like, almost like, like 10 years. <laughs> no, <laughs> feels like 10 years. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> You're getting old, cats. Yeah, no. a little bit, a little <laughs> bit. Winning, you guys. But no, it, it would have been fun, 16, 17. I I, yeah, 16, 17. So, yeah, you're six you years did one. You did one year or two years? One uh, year at Toronto. Okay, and then it was it. centralization that next yeah, year. That's right, that's right. Oh. So, yeah, exactly. That was the year, yeah. You still had it, yeah. That was a good Toronto team, too, I remember. Yeah, it was. Um, we went into Calgary and played Calgary in playoffs, and we won the first game. No, I think we won the second game to stay alive. Like, we went to three games. Mm -hmm. and. yeah. 
we just were thin. Like we were hoping you guys. Won. Everybody just, was hoping we would. <laughs> Calgary, goddamn, <laughs> it was so good. Did you guys win that year? Uh sixteen, seventeen. I think we did. I think we yeah, did in a, Ottawa. That was baby Chu Willette was in the belly. Yeah, we were year. six on the ice. That's how yeah. they announced it. Yeah, we won the Clarkson uh, Cup with one too many players, and we're like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, she was pregnant. Yeah. That was crazy. Wild. Fun year though, but I okay. So I wanted to see that side of things because I know your side on the our, our greatest year ever, seventeen eighteen. Um, but uh, before you get there, so you alluded to it. So it was centralization year. So you did all, the whole move. You were there, yeah. um, and then unfortunately, uh, you you got released uh, before Christmas, and then we found you an apartment, roommates. And said, you're going to live with these people and you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> and you're going to love it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I am going to love my life. <laughs> But Talk I remember that first weekend. So I ended up living with Mel de Roche and Nachi. I, Nachi. <laughs> so Nachi I Suzuki. Get, or, yeah. No, Fujimoto. No, Fujimoto. You're thinking Jesus. of Senna. Yeah. Sorry. So <laughs> we, I get into this apartment in Montreal And oh I'm not God. kidding you. My room had enough space for a bed. That was it. Like <laughs> I was in a shoebox. I paid two hundred dollars for rent. I think Mel oh, found Mel sick. found like the, the best slash smallest little like apartment for the three of them. It was crazy. most cost effective. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. At one point, when way. Mel Nachi was gone already, Mel and I like when we were about to move out. I just remember the ceiling was. <laughs> like just drenched like it was a, a complete it was a waterfall coming out of our ceiling oh no what would have been nachi's bedroom but nachi wasn't there anymore like i think nachi <laughs> moved out like the day before i totally forgot about this and like it was i don't think i knew about that <laughs> it, i think you came over to help like we literally had to like oh we, yeah, i yeah. need some sort of this is lesbian <laughs> in me i made some sort of contraption to get the water flowing out of the you made bedroom. a water shoot I, i made a water it was so cool And we were like, we need to get out of this place right now. And fortunate enough, we did. And um, I, I said it when Mel finally moved out, like we were, we were unofficially, we were common law. We yeah. were <laughs> for how long we lived together. And yeah. because they, you guys yeah. moved into condo. We were and over three years together. So well, uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm always going to keep that honor. So funny that she didn't mention that in her episode, but um, that's no, fine. We didn't. We didn't allude to that though. We didn't allude to, we didn't ask the question there and that's why okay. we went more about the bike trip and school and yeah. Yeah. Uh, there are cooler things other than common law. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm it's not, not what I meant, it. but Hey, I didn't bring that subject. So yeah. So you moved in and, and um, you know, that year, like what was your decision or what made you decide to actually come back from Calgary to go to Montreal versus Toronto? So I came in, um, I guess, pretty much the day after I was released. Um, obviously I talked a lot with mash while it was kind of all happening. Yeah. And I, I knew that mash was somebody I needed to lean on, um, with yeah. her disappointments from not getting centralized. So I flew out. I don't know if you remember this one, Cax I flew out here. It was, um, it was a, uh, recruiting trip. Yes. <laughs> We had a, I, so I came out and I flew in and just had a time with you guys. You guys had to put up with a lot that week and you did the rest of the year. But, um, I just remember getting back to Calgary and I texted Mel, Mel Davidson. And I said, I'm going to move to Montreal. And it was just something I knew I needed to do. Um, one of my biggest things with going back to Toronto was I felt like there was going to be so many people that every time I saw them, it was going to feel be a, I'm so sorry. Like, and having to explain or for me, um, I had a hard time facing my family. Um, I really felt like I had disappointed and let my family down and not making that team. And I would say that I probably ran away to get away from them and to try to get yeah. my own space. And I needed to do it. That was a growing up point for me. Um, and then obviously getting to work with Corey Kennedy was life changing and career changing for me. Yeah. Um, his head is so big. I've told him that so many times and <laughs> I just, I'm forever grateful for what he did. Um, and obviously forever grateful for all the friends that I had here to pick me up and also join me in some shenanigans throughout the time. Also to Noxie, you joined in shenanigans that I turned the Markham Thunder season around that year. <laughs> We went out to the bar in Old Port. You guys are welcome. I turned We the season around. The next day you were supposed to play. 
You were only I, like three beers. I think you did. I play. can't believe this is the episode that we're going to talk about this weekend, but I'm, I'm here for it I'm, because I'm confused right now. Which one is that? Markham weekend. They came into town. This is my, okay. I think my first weekend playing. And okay. I'm like, after the game, the Saturday night game, I'm like, they're like, Oh, we're going to go to the bar. I was like, perfect. We stayed out to the bar till 3 a.m. Noxie was playing the next day and she was told three beers. <laughs> I, this is when I came on the, so I came I on the bus <laughs> and how we had played and she was a stud. We went to overtime. We lost in a in overtime or a shootout. You guys won. Yeah. yeah. Every then, year or every game that year. I think we went into overtime. Yeah. Yeah, we did. It was like yeah. a, an insane insane streak um so yeah we get on the bus and and coach jim jackson jim jackson i walk past me he's like noxy come here for a second i'm like okay and i think he's gonna say like you know how he played really well today we're gonna start her again tomorrow and he goes you're gonna go tomorrow and i'm like all right yeah sick let's go and he's like but two or three and then shut her down okay and i was like yeah keep them to two or three goals and then we might be able to get a win and he's like no no two or three beers tonight and then then shut her down go to bed so i was like so then we go back to the room and obviously my room is always where the beers end up and so like all the girls are in the room and uh get into a few and i have my three beers and then they're all like you we're left going too. out i think you literally were like i have to go to bed you i put my sure. pjs on and i went into bed and i laid there while my whole team went out to the bar with Montreal, because you guys oh, were just one player. It was just, just you. <laughs> well, shows shows you where my night went. And yeah, I laid there for like maybe 45 seconds. I was like, yeah, fuck this. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> but we did. We got into one that night and yeah. we played on Sunday. And somehow we went into overtime again. As we said, we had a good streak. And I think we lost in OT or shootout. But yeah. then the Mark remember- Thunder didn't game the rest of the season. Yeah. And After I remember that. I went up to Mackers on the ice that next day. And I'm like, Mackers, how are you doing? She goes, I don't know. Mackers still <laughs> probably dangled everybody. Like just unbelievable. But that was like my first bit. Uh, that was a, that was a tough weekend for me. That was my first weekend back playing. And I think just being around you guys and reconnecting with my friends, it was nice. It was a fresh, a fresh, Oh my God, a breath of fresh air there you go. for me. So I think Cax, you well, can say it. And there's a, there's a certain point where like, and I think we've all kind of ha- hit this point in our hockey careers, obviously not, you know, as devastating a, of a point as you were at, you know, from being released from the, the national team, but we're like, you have to go back to loving the game and yeah. loving being around your teammates and find the things that really like bring you joy in hockey. Because if you, if you make it too much of a job, it does consume you. And I think that weekend, I mean, I'm glad we could play a small part, but the rest of that yeah. year, you know, was really formative for you, Ambrose. So why don't you, why don't you tell us a little bit about, you know, that team and kind of how it, how it turned you around. Just so much fun. Um, I know Mash and I talk about it a ton um, because <laughs> we lost to you guys in playoffs, Noxie yeah. and Mash and I went into the back room at class bell or wherever we were the <laughs> one of the bells and, <laughs> uh, well. We were both crying and we're both angry. And we're just like, like, what the hell is going on? Like, we're tired of this shit. Like this wasn't what we needed this year after the disappointment. And her and I just both said like, this is it. Like we're done doing this. Like we're, we're getting our shit together. And four years from now, it's not going to be the same story. And I mean, I, I won't speak for Mash, but I'm pretty darn sure she feels the same way that, um, people like Cax, people like Mel, um, Katia, Sarah LaFour, like those are people that I leaned on very heavily in a time when I was struggling with a lot. Um, did I drink too much? Probably. Did I party too much? Probably. <laughs> did I not care about hockey? Yeah. Like, and it was just like, I needed to do that that year. And um, I think one of the best things for me was having a trainer like Corey who understood, okay, this is not a time. Like I remember we would watch some of the rivalry games together and, it was just like, okay, we got to do this for Aaron. Like it's, let's have a beer. Let's have some poutine. Like he was like, I understand this isn't about performance right now. This is about where you're at mentally. And, um, I appreciate the people in my life that understand that about me and always have, um, because obviously 
what goes on upstairs and in between these big ears is a lot sometimes. And especially that year. So, um, I had a lot of people in my corner and, um, forever grateful because I, I do know that that is what turned a lot of things around for me. That's, that's cute. And that's, that's, uh, that's nice. Be, nice to hear Aaron, because, um, that year we didn't know, we just wanted to be there for, you know, for the, f- I mean, you came in middle of the year. I, I knew I, I was pulled in for both mash when she came, she came in. And when you came to Montreal too, I guess, um, like Charlie, I went out for dinner and met Emirates and basically made her feel like, okay, yes, we like, we're going to be there for you. You'll train. It's a good balance. Like you'll be okay. And Corey is amazing. And anyways, it just felt like you guys were taken care of on the like fitness aspects of things. And then like, we would try to make this year a memorable one and not just on the hockey side of things. And the cool part is we did perform well. Like yeah. we did do well <laughs> through all of the fun and the, the drinking maybe and the, the parties and whatnot. But I think that we all put in the work uh, on the ice and practices and at the gym. I remember like we were training at the Olympic stadium kind yeah. of like all together with you guys too that year. Yeah. Um, so it was just, it was cool to, it was cool to hear you yesterday say saying that, but to see you actually get there this year and do it all. And, and, you know, just watching and, and, looking at the journey that you went through, right. I saw you at the beginning or I guess the beginning of your new journey is yeah. what I would call it. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, it wasn't the end of the other one. It was just the beginning of that yeah. new part of you. And I think it's awesome. And I think that what you've done on the mental side of thing too, is, is, is remarkable. And um, yeah, that was, that, I don't know if you said <laughs> What's between those big ears? <laughs> you you kill me every time. You have a way to make people smile, Aaron, and you um, you bring a lot to to the teams too. So you had a big part that year too for our team. That's something to remember as well. No, Jill, and, and it's because of Jill. This is even go. better. No, we had a bet for whoever's dog barked first <laughs> has to buy coffee. What did you? <laughs> here you go here's the coffee <laughs> nice oh my gosh okay. of course that's that's Jill's Sonia. Here. Yeah, Jill Sonia uh, Olympic Hi, Jill. gold medalist not a big deal <laughs> <laughs> oh I'm a I'm a friend of the show <laughs> yes <she is>. <laughs> <laughs> hey where's your medal is it still in one piece Jill yeah, yeah she, she took it with her to the coffee shop I was like what are you doing well, she had it last night and it was you around people's you're gonna make friends <laughs> Here, she's cutting the line being like oh have you seen this yeah i'm gonna take first order thanks i'm gonna take one <laughs> second before before we ask you the next question but last night if you remember noxie jill was saying like yeah i love to give the medal away and like put it around people's necks and everything at some point this one one of our friends just took it and went and started flirting with a, a <laughs> he used it as a, a flirting little token <laughs> Yeah, and then got another guy to like talk to the girls and match them up. I was like, "What is this?" And he's like, "Give me your medal. I need the medal now. This is my little tool here." And, and he just like said, "You're welcome. You're welcome." <laughs> Why do you think we train so hard? Bringing <laughs> people together. <laughs> I had so I go to the Concordia Stingers game. I guess I should should bring them up too. As yes, a, of course. Them. That year, um, that's perfect. So I was I was able to go to their game on Friday night and the amount of people that came up to me and were like, your teammate, she broke her medal. And I'm like, it's not the gold medal. It's fine. And I'm like, well, I will never have a conversation now with somebody because they're like, Oh my God, is your teammates medal? Okay. I'm like, first of all, it's Jill. So I'm not surprised. Second of all, it's not our gold medal. So it's okay. That's, that's that story really of, took off. This is the level of fame I've been striving for girls. <laughs> this is it. This she is took it. her medal to Home Depot. Good girl. <laughs> oh my you gosh. You guys finish your podcast. I'll come on the next episode again. <laughs> I love the cameo. I love that. Okay. So the CWHL folds, you stay in Montreal. You continue with the PWHPA Montreal region. And you guys, you guys do, we kind of talked about it a little bit earlier, but you guys have a unique uh, situation where you guys, you know, are training together daily. Um, you have access to the gym facilities. This is something that like is not, uh, you know, a standard or common at all in any post-college women's hockey. Um, but we will move into uh, a little bit now about your time at the Olympics. I thought you were frozen there for a second. <laughs> I'm hyper-concerned about this now. 
No, I'm just super <laughs> happy because you said the, the Olympic word. Yes. Let's this, talk this about the thing. Olympics. Like start to finish on ice, off ice. Talk about, you know, your journey. Um, give us, yeah, give us your take. I mean, it's, yeah. it's been a whirlwind to get here, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I won't, I will never forget. Jill was like, so we get in, it's a long travel day, obviously going to China. Um, and we get over there and we get in and our, our Lulu bags are in there and everybody's like, we're exhausted. Like, I'm like, I got a shower. My, I actually had a very similar story to Bose. My shower didn't work. It didn't drain. <laughs> Oh, so it no. just continued. It didn't flood as much as Bose's did, but I did have that issue. And then I had to go into nurses, but Jill was like, guys, you got it. You got to look at the stuff. And I'm like, I'm dead tired. But like, there was a bag of Lulu things sitting here. Like, I'm like, I can't not nursey and mash are trying all their stuff on. I'm like, I'm not going to try it on. I'm just going to take it out, look at it, put it away. So I did that. <laughs> and then I just took the tags off as I went along throughout the week, but I was pretty fortunate. Um, rooming with nursey mash and brianne jenner um good crew that's a that's a solid crew i know and that's a balance like nursey's um one of my 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 people like she always has been jenner is jenner and i think just to be around jenny during the olympics i think was huge for me um because i had no idea what to expect uh in all honesty and then to be around mash was i think for us just like a high five to both of us, like a back pat on the back. Like we were like, we're here, like we, we're doing this. So pretty fortunate for that group. And I, I uh, we had a lot of fun and I was now I'm just going to ramble, but um, so we got stuff given to us. Hockey Canada shipped a bunch of stuff in and Jenner, the whole house was getting so mad because I wouldn't stop putting things up. Like there was little pictures that we got drawn and I was like putting them up on the walls. Like I made a little <laughs> nook with like our extra bed and I made it like with the blanket and put the lights up around and like, it was so cute. And they're like, Aaron, can you like stop nesting, please? Like you, you're <laughs> killing us every day. Like I'd be doing something else. And I was just like, I'm anxious. I want to do something like we're not yeah. playing. I built a ping pong table. <laughs> um, <laughs> Hockey Canada shipped over a ping pong table. I was like, guys, we are going to need this at the end of the tournament. I am building this. So I did it all by myself. Took me about five hours and I crushed (laughs) it. I was like, we we went to practice and they're like, Aaron, like, why are you rushing? Like, I want to get back to the ping pong table. I want to finish it. But it came in clutch. It came in very clutch after the games. Okay. Looked at Jill for approval. (laughs) I was going to say, were you only playing ping pong on this ping pong table because that's not how I use ping pong tables. No, that is not why the ping pong table, that was not the that. <laughs> I knew that there was going to be a greater purpose at the end of yes. the tournament than just a ping pong table. Yes. And you built it. They will I come. I did. That's amazing. That's and impressive. Good for you. you. Thank you. you know Speaking of, of the swag, um, you know, it's a very common thing at the Olympics mm-hmm. to kind of like trade things. And you guys have Lululemon stuff. So you guys are like, you know, you're, I, th- I think you guys had the best outfits. For sure. I, I, I think Cax would agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I'd like, I really, well, outfits in general, I thought your guys' fit were really good every day. Love the updates. I, um, I watch for those pictures every day. I'm like, Ooh, what are the girls wearing or what's going on? And then which one was your to We, we had a debate here. Um, open ceremony or opening, closings? Opening hundred percent. There you go. There. Yeah. <laughs> but you See? had a flag in your jacket. I know, super cool. But that, well, I mean, I should say closing cause that's the only one I still have, but I don't have the open <laughs> ceremonies jacket. But you don't, oh, this is good. Oh, You're where we going the with it. I knew what where we were going to it. <laughs> Well, I had the brilliant idea. fortunes to um, be able to trade a jacket with uh, one of the players on the Finnish team. Um, so we had talked about it before. Like we were like, we're going to switch jackets. We're going to switch jackets. So the last night um, I go to switch jackets with her and love my jacket. I have this nice silver finished jacket. It says Team Finland on the back. Like it's really cool. And I wake silver. up the next morning. What? I just silver jacket. I just, I just stuck to that. Yeah. Very. Um, wake <laughs> against... up the next morning at like 5 a.m. And I'm like, I think my wallet was in that jacket. No. Oh, no. 
And I'm like, I look around, I have no panic, like no panic whatsoever. And I'm like, yeah, I went to the visa store and I wore that jacket. Like it definitely was in there. So I, I message her and I'm like, Hey, like, I think my wallet's in your jacket. And they left that morning. Um, she's like, Hey, I'll, I'll, I'll check when I get back to Finland. Oh no. So because <laughs> it was hours later, hey, oh, no. found your wallet. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm like, huh? Oh, At least I don't need my wallet while I'm in Finland. So I've just been living off of Apple pay. Um, it, great news though. Um, the wallet arrived in Aurelia on Friday, so I still don't have the wallet, but it's here. Oh, it's so here. It was stopped in customs for a week. Jesus. So oh I, my goodness. I I'm excited. I'm getting like some sort of like, I'm getting like a care package. I think not just the wallet too. So I'm very excited for this. Well, as you, sh- Oh, Rupert just no, starts. It's okay. Use the second. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd have to pay him a coffee yet. I'm actually surprised <laughs> when he hasn't uh, done anything. <laughs> That's well. And at least like your passport or like, yeah, I had to pass something. Everybody was like, how are you so calm? I'm like, well, I don't need my wallet right now. Like I can't buy anything. Yeah. So like, I will say it was a little tougher when I got back to Canada. So it's been <laughs> Sunday night after the heritage game, we're sitting down in the, the hotel lobby, having dinner and drinks. And I go to pay for the bill and I go to tap and the lady's like, Oh, we don't have tap. And I just turned beside me and I was like, uh, Renata, I guess um, you're buying. <laughs> so I e-transfer right away. It was tough going to Mexico though. Mexico Ooh. with no wallet, not ideal. Wait. <laughs> you, you traveled to Mexico without a wallet. Yep. How <laughs> did you have like your, your credit card, like saved nope. up and everything I have like, so then at one point, uh, like I was like, I don't want her sending me my credit card information over message. So fair. We FaceTimed and I'm like, Hey, um, can you just hold up my credit card, please. So I like wrote down all the information I needed, wrote down my health card number again, like just so I had it all in one book. So I have all the oh numbers gosh. I needed and there we go. Well, at least if you like got in a real bind, like, I don't know if you're driving or something and somebody was like, oh, like a uh, license and registration. You're just like, here's my gold medal from <laughs> the plan. Olympics. Yeah. Actually, Cax, funny enough, when we were playing in that summer rush tournament, the one yeah. summer Poulin played with us on our team. Yeah. And I remember she said she got pulled over, you know, speeding home from the tournament. Yeah. And the guy was like, yeah, license and registration. She's like, yeah, I passed it to him. And he like kind of looked at it and was just like, are you, are you? And then looked yeah. at the sticks in the back and was like, you're Mary Philippe Poulin. She's just like, you know, Poulin's yeah, like, sorry. she's super quiet. Like, yeah, sorry. I was speeding or whatever. And he's just like, have a great day. Like, just <laughs> see ya. <laughs> That's the benefit, I guess, on that note too. The, That's the plan like, would be a hundred percent to bring out the metal. Like, yeah. I don't want to do that a lot, but like, if I get pulled over on my drive home from Montreal today, <laughs> The metal's coming out. The metal's coming out. (laughs) I need to hear that. If that happens, it needs to be shared. We'll we'll have a part two uh, (laughs) on the podcast. (laughs) Obviously, we'll be driving very safe. So there's no need to worry about that. But just if by chance, then you have a backup plan. And I was texting uh, Nursey a little bit before. And um, she told me that you're a huge uh, curling fan. So (laughs) what was it like to be at the Olympics? Did you get to go watch curling and... Did you yeah, get to you meet Nursey? If, oh that's a, if that's the only thing she threw you, I'm like thankful for Sarah right now. Um, <laughs> She's looking out for you. <laughs> um, no. So I am a big curling fan. Um, actually, my grandparents are huge curling. Like we would always watch the Briars and stuff. So I think for me, like it was really weird because when we watched things in, at the village, like we didn't have commentary, right? Like you'd have to go to the COC lounge to get any sort of commentary. So the curling was really cool because you could hear them talking about whatever they like their their strategies. And uh, after the mixed curling was done, we were walking in the village and Rachel and John, so Rachel Holm and John Morris were coming out. And I was like, oh my God, it's Rachel and John. (laughs) And Rachel's like, oh, hi, Sarah. And like, we start talking. And afterwards, I'm like, we had a great talk, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> and like I messaged my family after and I was freaking out and Sarah's like, we're walking in. I go, Sarah, like, this is why I walk around with you. Like everybody knows who you are. She's like, no, they don't. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, Sarah, like you're very recognizable. No, I'm not. And I'm like, I can't with you. Like, I don't know how you don't think you stick out. Like, I'm like, <laughs> I walk with you so I can ride your coattails. Like, that's exactly what it is. 
<laughs> people who ask her for autographs like never me because they're like i don't know who she is but like, like oh can you take a picture pass yeah, every, the time, phone. every time <laughs> actually <laughs> like okay that. It, oh my god that well, actually yeah those moments i think are the the funniest when they don't recognize the other like yeah. great athlete on the on the site i have one little like and Pooh made fun of it all the time but it was with Pooh. someone asked her to take a picture we were in boston to be honest but yeah and yeah, we're in Boston and we're at Bean Town and everything. And Casey is there and everyone. And I think Dex was just left and they asked to take a picture with Hillary. So they're the kids are there and they're like, could you take a picture? And then Pooh's like, Yeah, sure. So she's the <laughs> one taking the picture. And I was like, Oh my God. Like, do you realize this is like Captain Crunch? Like, I don't know. Like, it was that just so funny. They were like, oh, I don't know. It was so, yeah, I was dying. Oh, I think Roberto Lavongo tweeted something like that, like a few years ago, like, oh, this nice family asked me to take a picture for them. And like, <laughs> same thing. It's just funny. Like, you know, obviously she's the best player in the world. So, yeah, <laughs> that's so <laughs> jokes. But yeah, yes, I'm a big curling fan. <laughs> you're a good so, sport. So you got to, to meet your like, you I did know, get idol. to meet, meet Rachel and John. Um, we didn't get to go to any curling matches, which I was kind of disappointed about. I also, <laughs> I did, I dropped the ball. Um, so Jenner and I, every game, I go down to the, um, the calf, I get a coffee in that machine. And then I'd go up to the COC lounge and add another shot in from the Nespresso machine. <laughs> so Jenner would always meet me in the COC lounge and I'm walking out and I was talking to Jennifer Jones for a little bit. And then as I was leaving, I'm like, bye, Colleen. Good luck today. I was like, no, it's not Colleen. It's Jennifer. And like the <laughs> elevators were closing. I was like, Jennifer, I meant Jennifer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was like, well, that's okay. You yeah. get to take pictures and then you, you know, misname famous yeah. curlers. So yeah. that's, it's, it's not like I like just made up a name. Like Colleen <laughs> Jones is still a very, very successful yeah, just curler. Classic like, mixed up. <laughs> Uh, and it probably up. happens all the time. So she was probably very ticked off. So I'm sorry, Jennifer. <laughs> there you are. Official oh, apology Aaron. on the Knox and yeah. show. Well, uh, it's amazing. And it's unfortunate that obviously you guys didn't get to, you know, kind of watch it in person with the, with COVID this year, but um, you know, stick at it next four years. You know, I guess we'll see where yeah. your plans land. Mm -hmm. And while we're talking about your journey, uh, you know, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about uh, your advocacy for mental health. And we're, we're saying like, do we want to end it on a serious note or not? But, you know, either way, we have to talk about it. And you wrote uh, an incredible uh, kind of a, a opinion piece or personal piece called In My Own Words, Aaron Ambrose. It was published on uh, Hockey Canada's website. So maybe just talk a little bit about how all of this this whole journey, um, the ups and downs of being a, a professional athlete, a college athlete, um, you know, kind of how, how it's shaped uh, your advocacy and, and your voice uh, when it comes to mental health. Well, first off, thank you for bringing it up. Um, I think it is anytime I do get to have, especially an open conversation like this, I think it's really important for me to talk about it. Um, and for me, I'm very grateful that Hockey Canada reached out to me to to do that piece. I think it was one of the hardest things I've done. Um, but I think it was a huge step for me in sharing my story, but also um, dealing with things myself. I think that uh, mm -hmm. a lot of teammates knew that I was struggling, um, but I don't think they understood to what degree that was. So I think that this was instead of going around to every teammate and being like, Hey, this is what's going on. Like this was an opportunity for me to write, um, a lot of things out and to share my story, to share my journey, to share the difficulties um, without having to personally have the conversation every single time, which mm -hmm. I would never want to do, but I, I want people to understand that this is a big part of me. Um, and I want to continue to be somebody that talks about what I'm dealing with because I know that nobody really did when I was 14 um, so I'm very thankful that I have that opportunity. Um, I know that like I'm doing uh, Scotiabank rising stars this year through the PWHPA. And I'm really excited for that because I know I get to connect with girls that when I was that age, that was when things really started to, to hit for me. Um, and then one of the biggest things that I've, I've really tried to talk about a lot is the post Olympic depression. Yes. Um, I think we all are aware of it. Um, mm -hmm. 
I don't think mine's quite hit me just yet because we've been everywhere and on such a high, but um, a week ago today was like my first night that I had literally been alone Mm -hmm. since we went to the Olympics. Like I was just staying with parents or family or whatever. And that was the first night that I sat there and I was like, holy shit, what just happened? Yeah. Um, So trying to stay ahead of it, trying to acknowledge that this is something that's going to be a part of these next couple months for me, that there are going to be some days that I struggle. Um, I know that I just achieved a lifelong dream of mine and I am so proud of myself for that, but now it's what's next and finding the purpose behind that. Um, and also allowing myself to have kind of bad days. I think that that's a big thing for me is knowing that there's going to be times when maybe it's just not a good day for me and dealing with things as I need to, um, talking with my therapist as much as I can. See, Rupert, he's just supporting me. That's all it is. That should be like a beer. Let's just say good job, Aaron. Yeah, that's sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I just it's I'm happy you guys brought it up. Um, and obviously this is something that I want to continue to talk to young teams about, talk to older teams, um, talk to my teammates. Um, I know that it's just I'm not the only one. And yes. that's the that big thing is I have opened the door for people if they feel comfortable to talk to me about it. Um, this is now a, Hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what I do every day to to help myself. This is how I medicate myself. Like there's so many different things. And my Mm -hmm. story is not the only story. Um, I've just been fortunate enough to be given a platform to share my story. I think that's like, honestly, so important because all athletes, I would argue have had mental health struggles in one way or or another. Um, You know, you're under extreme amounts of pressure your identity is so interwoven in your athletics and a huge part of team sports and individual sports is appearing that you have it all together. Um, you never want to appear, you know, panicked or, um, you know, off, you don't want to have an off day and then, you know, let your team down. So there is this weird, um, you know, subculture of sports that really has been about hiding mental health struggles. So, um, we're very fortunate. We're very proud of you for for sharing your story because it's a lot of our stories. And uh, you're right; it does it does need to be spoken about. It needs to be opened to the players that are coming in behind us, um, and also honestly to players that led the way for us. Because uh, in many ways, I'm sure they struggled more than we have had to because of the lack of advocacy. So we're extremely proud of you. Um, you know, we've said on the on the show before we talked about DIFD. Um, with Meg Turner on, there's lots of avenues. And, and the one thing about this community is that, uh, you know, we are, we are full of compassionate individuals and, and we're here to help or here to listen um, as much as we can. And then we're here to support you. And if you need more than, than just a friend, you know, that's, that's kind of part of it too. Thank you. Thank you. you said it all. I can't you do anything. This is good. I have, yeah. You, you, uh, you're, you're creating, you're giving everyone such a great example, Aaron. I just love it. And I hope people get to discover you even more. And if they knew you a little bit, then they get to know you more via this podcast, but, uh, yeah, met you four years ago and I can't even believe and become to, or start to describe how you've, you've changed. So, um, and all for the best and all for the better. And i I was pumped when you DM me and slid right in there. <laughs> Um, to get you on the show. So we, well, we love it. I think like Noxie, you said, like, didn't want to end things on a sad note. And I don't think it's sad. I just think it's, it's not fun and happy and stupid Aaron. Like this isn't goofy Aaron. This is another part of Aaron. Um, yeah. <laughs> and one of the things that I, I said in my piece is um, I don't want to be known as just a hockey player. I don't want to be just known as a right shot defenseman. And now more than ever, I don't want to be known as just an Olympic champion. Like I, I'm still Aaron Ambrose from Keswick. That's where I, grew Rock. Up at, I love it. That damn place. And, um, <laughs> love it. It's just, it's so much more than just the Olympics. And I, I need to remind myself that as well. Absolutely. And we love, love you that. for it. We love every little inch of you and we're so happy and proud of you to, <laughs> to be sharing so openly uh, yes. your journey with us. So thank you for being on the show. And we have some more announcements because we, yes. well, we announced it last episode, but we can talk a little bit more about the Cortex Showcase. Yeah. Jax? 
Yes. So um, as everyone's seen, obviously, or hopefully uh, via Instagram, we have now a uh, Dream Gap tour stop that will be in Montreal, uh, April 2nd and 3rd. Uh, it's in collaboration or partnership with the Center 2102 and Cortex uh, Agency. Our management is, pu is putting it all together for us. So again, four teams, Team uh, Harvey's will be there, um, Team Adidas from Minnesota, Team Bauer, Boston, and Scotiabank from Calgary. And then it's going to be a whole weekend deal. So you can get the weekend and the day pass and everything tickets are available on the pwhv8.com and uh, we want to sell out so please bring Be everyone there. share share the message you might, Aaron, you might you even need... see Erin ambrose yeah who knows in. actually she in. she said she would be there potentially so <laughs> we're I holding you I to it. try to come <laughs> it depends on if I have friends in town or not. Cat. That's true. That's true. My bad. But there's well, other will... Olympians that will be around. So please come and uh, meet them. And that will be a good showcase in Montreal. Exactly. And then this Saturday, I can't believe it's already here. Hosted by the Peter World Pete's of the OHL. Yeah. Uh, March 26th at 7.05 Peterborough Memorial Center, PMC. Um, we will be playing. We, the Toronto Sonnet team, will be playing against team harvey's from montreal yes. in uh, another rematch another showdown so um you can get your tickets at tickets.memorialcenter.ca an all-female broadcast team for that show so those couple of events coming up and then that's pretty much going to round out the secret dream gap tour this year with the pwhpa and um you know hopefully more guests to come on the knox and cack show but stay tuned Yes. Thank you, Aaron. Thanks, Ambrose. Thank you, guys. You're fantastic. The Noxie and Cax Show on SDPN, produced in partnership with the PWHPA. Follow Noxie and Cax on Twitter at 27Noxie and at CareLMR. The views expressed are those of the individuals and are not necessarily those of the PWHPA. Check out sdpn.ca for more Noxie and Cax and the rest of the SDPN crew. She scores!